Hey, Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So today, I want to take two figures and merge them into one. We're going to take the Laser Light He-Man and the Standard He-Man from 2008, and we're going to make it into uh, one action figure. So here's the Standard He-Man I'm going to use right here, and here's the Laser Light figure. So basically, I'm going to merge it so it has the new He-Man uh, back and parts that lights up still, but yet the old He-Man part so it looks like a regular He-Man with a, a Laser Light feature. So let's go ahead and get this, this water boiling. And then I'll go ahead and explain why I just don't stuff the backpack onto the old figure. Water does take quite a while to boil, so while that's boiling, let's go and talk about this. Let's go and pull the armor off on the 2008 E-Man. And on his back, you'll notice it's solid back there. There's no hole or anything else. So now let's look at the armor on the laser light. Pull this off. And there's the tab right there that actually goes into the hole in his back. So let me show this to you. You can see it's actually, his back is actually made different than all the other figures. So he has that piece on there. And that is the part that we need to make sure it connects up to the new figure. So let's go ahead and uh, get this ready. His head's kind of stuck, so I'm going to wait and heat it up so I don't break the, the neck peg. Now, this particular laser light He-Man I bought used, and the sword has a bend in it. See that bend right there? It's been kind of kinked. So our first goal is to get this sword fixed. So to get this fixed, we're going to heat up that sword to a really hot temperature, and then afterwards we're going to uh, straighten it out. Now, because it does take batteries, it has wires, we don't just want to dump it right into the water. We want to be very careful that uh, we only use the tip of it in the water because we don't want to actually cause any kind of short-circuiting or anything else. You can see it works just fine, it lights up. So we're going to fix that kink in that sword. So that's our first order of business to get that sword straightened out and fixed. Sometimes it just takes so long for this water to boil. Now I do like this cool new boiler and I do have a review of it on my, my YouTube channel. So if you want to check out this uh, water heater that I use, uh, check it out in my old videos and you'll see the, I actually have a time lapse video of how much time it takes to boil totally full. Let's go ahead and just speed this up. Make sure you got a spoon slotted so you can get parts out and make sure you got some screwdrivers handy. We're going to use these in order to pull off the loin cloths and, of course, these O-ring set rings, pliers. So we can uh, use these O-rings right here in order to uh, make sure the legs are tight. All right, the water's starting to get pretty hot. In order to get this sword straight, I need super, super hot water. We want the plastic to be completely soft and malleable so we can do this. Now, one thing I like to do is have two cups available, one for the parts I want to use in the future figure and one for the parts that I'm not going to use. That's why I keep track of it. You can see there's my cup for the not used. I already have the old head in there. Water starting to boil. So let's go ahead and uh, pour that into the, the paper cup. Um, never put the parts directly into the, the water boiler or the, the water heater because you don't want to uh, cause plastic residue to be in your thing you use to heat the water. So always pour it somewhere else, keep it clean. Alright, so again, when you put the sword in there, be very careful just to put the tip in there. You don't want to cause any short circuiting.
I like to move it back and forth so I can tell when it starts to get soft. You can see the blade start to, to go with the water when you do this. Before it softens up, the blade will actually move the water and eventually the water will move the blade as it softens. Alright, that's looking pretty soft in there. Let's go and pull it out and first thing you do is just kind of pinch it and pull it straight. Get any kinks out. If you see any more kinks, you just kind of bend it yourself. And then while it's cooling, you want to hold the tip and pull it straight. And this will allow it to cool straight. So just give it a, a some pressure, some pulling pressure on it as you do this. And then as it cools, have a nice straight tip. All right, and believe it or not, it does cool pretty quick. It's still a little warm, but you can see now it's straight, and now it's ready for our figure. All right, let's go ahead and put our figures in here. Now my first thing I want to do is swap the boots. So just set these figures in there, get their boots in there. There they are, sitting in their hot tub, soaking their feet. Now, this takes a little bit of time for it to get soft enough for it to work. Now, if I would have used two cups stacked together, the water would have retained its its heat a lot longer. So you may want to uh, use two cups when you do this. Also, make sure you have some sort of uh, washcloth. This water can get very hot. Sometimes you may have to use those to hang onto it, almost like pot holders. All right, let's go ahead and try to get these boots off, see if it's, if it's hot enough yet. Now I'm putting these boots in the cup of parts I'm not going to use. Now I'll pull off the 2008 He-Man boots. And something I'm noticing is the pegs look different where the boots attach. Let's go and compare these. Sure enough, they are different. Notice how they're shaped differently. So if I put the 2008 boots directly on the laser light He-Man, there's going to be a gap. Here, let me show you what this will look like. So I'm going to actually pull off the legs completely. And actually swap the legs too. Just here, check this out. Make sure you got the correct boot whenever you put it on. And you can see that gap right there in the leg. And that's what we don't want. We don't want that gap to the whole entire leg out not just uh, the boot. All right, so back to soaking the figures. Now we'll see if it's hot enough to pull the legs off. And again, this is what's known as the boil and pop method, in case you guys are wondering what that's called. And so this is how I do a lot of my customs, is heat them up, get the plastic soft and malleable, and then uh, pull them off. Now the trick is get the loincloth off using uh, these screwdrivers. Now it takes a lot of heat to get this. Um, the loincloth does heat up very quickly and becomes malleable very fast, but it also cools down very quickly. So let's reheat this water. We're waiting for that water to reheat. Let's try to pull off the laser light He-Man's legs. Not quite hot enough. You don't want to force the parts apart. If they're not coming apart, um, just reheat again. There they are, soaking in the tub. And notice I have it up to their waists. So we can also warm up that, that loincloth because we're going to swap these, these loincloths too. Okay, so to swap this, first take a screwdriver and start pulling the edges around. Just to make sure there's no paint that's going to be uh, adhered. So you don't want that paint to adhere. Then you rotate it 90 degrees. Um, this side is wider, so put the screwdriver in there. Keep reheating as you go. And then slowly start to slide it around, and it kind of folds that lip up. Then you're going to pull it over the leg points. 
this does take a little bit of practice to do. There we go, I got it off. Now I'm going to pull off his uh, other parts. Let's put them back in and get them heated up. Now you don't want the actual torso to be in the water if possible because sometimes that plastic's harder and it will crack. Okay, let's go and pull this guy's legs off. Much easier. And again, I have my cup of parts, the ones I want to keep and the ones that I'm not keeping. Let's pull his loincloth off. Now his is actually glued to the bottom of the uh, crotch piece. So let's first keep heating this up and pulling it off all the way around. Once you get it so it's almost ready to come off, you don't have to, to carefully break the glue that's holding it on. Just be very careful because again, I might want to use these parts on a, another figure some other time so you don't want to destroy them. Pull it off the glued part. There we go. And I'll put that in my, my cup for parts I'm not using again. Let's go ahead and get his arms. I'll also pull that head off now too. Now, you want to keep the pins with the forearms. And the reason for this is because you want the skin color to match perfectly and be the right sizing for those pins. You may find that different figures, when they mold them sometimes, um, the pins fit differently in the in the forearm, so try to keep them a matching set. And that torso is going into the box of or the cup of parts I'm not using. Now, notice the loincloth is one wide side and one small side. You want to match that up on the figure when you put this on. So let's get these forearms off first, and then we'll put that loincloth on. And again, sometimes, like I said, with one cup, the water cools down pretty quick. I wish I would have had two cups stacked together, but sometimes we have to use a screwdriver to help pry it apart. Be careful you don't slip off and, and stab yourself. The, screw, the screwdrivers get pretty tight on the, or, or the, the, screw, the, the tips get pretty sharp on the screwdrivers that can cut you pretty quickly. And again, you want to match that peg with the forearm. Whenever you store your parts for custom figures, keep the, the pegs with the forearms. There's my parts I'm not using, and there's my parts that I am reusing. This one's just tough to get apart. Carefully, you do not stab yourself. So I'm gonna get some more hot water in here. Get that arm warmed up to get it apart easy. Add some more water to my and let's just get that boiling right away. Because I know I'm gonna need more to finish this figure. That hotter water that did the trick came apart pretty quickly. All right, and again, we're doing this all for that hole in the back. So let's go ahead and put that loincloth on. Make sure you match the wide side with the wide side of the, of the figure. You can kind of turn and look and find that area where it's wide. Now, again, this loincloth cools down very quickly. It's gonna take numerous times of reheating and you're gonna put it on. You do not want to stretch this out when it's cool, otherwise it will um, malshape it. So make sure it stays hot the whole time when you're doing this. Now, one thing you want to avoid is cutting the loincloth. A lot of people will cut the side of the loincloth to get it off and on easier. Um, that's just a mess, because then you have to glue it back in place, and later on the glue can break apart. Try to keep it with the loincloth in one piece. This is the way you do it, just keep heating it up over and over again. And then, just like when you first started, when you pulled the edges out, just pull them out and tuck them in to that seam. Um, the top will like to roll down, just keep the screwdriver and keep pressing that top up and again, keep heating it up. 
That's the trick, is to keep the parts warm as you do this. And you can see how it's curling right there, so I'm going to use the edge of the screwdriver to try to force it into the, the, the seam. And it does take a, a lot of patience, so just be patient. Keep heating it up as, as you need to. Now the loin clock, like I said, does require super hot water for it to work right, so. Now I always try to plug my sink while I'm doing this, because I'm always afraid those small little pieces for the forearms are going to fall down the drain. So I would suggest you keep that. Hey, there it is. And it's nice and in place. So, now, um, a lot of times these figures end up having loose legs. And this one did have loose legs when I got it, so to fix this, we're going to take and uh, use O-rings. And I'm going to go and dump these parts in the hot water so that they're ready to go in a few minutes. And stretch out your O-ring first with your, um, with your set ring pliers. And you just slide it on over that leg peg. Hold it in place while you pull out the set ring pliers and just slide it down on the leg. And if you go to, to hebro.com, he-bro.com, it will show you uh, what size O-rings to use for different parts and assemblies. And once that's slid on there, it will make that leg a nice tight joint. You don't have to worry about them falling over all the time. You can see how it places just right up tight up against there. Now let's do the other side. Same thing, you just stretch it out ahead of time, keep rotating as you stretch it. I like to put it right on the tip to get the best stretch possible. And again, once it's, it's all pliable and stretched out, just like a balloon before you blow it up, how you pull it a bunch of times to stretch it out, same thing. So then let's go ahead and put this on this side. And again, you just place it over it, get it past that, that ridge pull off your uh, pliers and then just slide it down the leg. All right, now have, have nice tight legs. Now the fun part, let's just get all the parts out and start putting it together. Now, the biggest problem people have with this part is sometimes they'll get the wrong leg on the wrong side and look for that muscle that goes on the interior and you can figure out which is the right which is the left and the boot the same way look for the curve that's the wrong one there we go it's the right one and again just look for that muscle that goes on the inside of the leg all right the legs are on on to the next step let's get the forearms on now these could be a little tricky so again, we have that pin in there we use from the other figure. Slide it on there. And I like to use the edge of the counter to kind of push it in place. And while it's still really hot and malleable, it'll work really easy. Well, this one's starting to cool down a little bit. We'll see if we have enough heat to make it work. It's just not going back together. Let's try the tip of the screwdriver. Sometimes that helps. Nope. So I found sometimes if you take and you uh, keep trying to reheat it, obviously, and sometimes you may have to switch it to which side is actually attached. So right now I have the one side attached. I may pull this apart and try to switch it around so the other side of the arm's attached, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's try to heat it up a little more. And that should be the last of the water I need, so I'm going to leave my, my pot open so it can dry out. You don't want it to rest on the inside. Let's try pushing that back in place. It's just not wanting to go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, take it apart and put the pin on the other side. Put it back together and we'll push from the other direction and see if that helps. I 
again, you don't want to force these parts too much. If they're not going together, just a little more heat, a little more patience. All right, the arm's on. Time to put the armor on now. Backpack on. Heat up his right hand because the sword handle is a lot bigger. Just gotta make sure it's nice and soft and malleable so you don't ruin the hand. And there we go. A laser light He Man that um, looks like the old He Man. How cool is that? Alright, so this custom is a pretty easy custom. Um, this is a great way to get your feet wet in trying to do customs. Let me show you some other cool things you can do with this figure too. Let's go back to my uh, little studio room and let's uh, play this figure a little bit more and try some other things out. Oh, there's the parts I'm not using right now. These will make great fodder pieces for some other customs some other time. All right, so I was thinking, you know, it'd be kind of cool to try to put the old armor on him. I mean, it is neat, neat the way he is, but, you know, if I'm going to really go all the way back to the 2008 version, let's just stick the old armor back on and then pop on the backpack. Because, again, our main key was that hole in the back. So let's pull off this armor here. Now, a lot of times we call this mix and match when we're doing things like this. We're just, just popping parts off and on. Now, I'm not going to put the back piece in because it's not going to fit across the back of that hole. So it's going to hold it together, put the backpack on. Now, what's cool is the backpack has these ridges that actually holds that armor together with those pins. So it actually worked out a lot better than I thought that back in his hand and actually you know what I actually like that a lot better that is so cool this is the he-man I dreamed about when I was a kid having a, a lighted he-man or a lighted sword he-man um, you know at the time Star Wars was big and lightsabers were in and having a regular he-man with a lighted sword that is just really cool All right, so this is a custom. Like I was saying, you guys should be able to produce the same custom if you want, as long as you have the two figures. It's pretty easy just to part swap. Let's go ahead and uh, see how it looks in the dark and stuff too. What the heck? Let's get these lights off. Go. Of course, beer. he's got his lightsaber now. How cool is that? He man lightsaber. So of course, you know, I'm gonna have to put him up against uh, another foe, right? And for those that have seen my other videos, you know who I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and uh, grab my other figure. does look pretty cool. Okay, let's just get the other figure and have, have some fun with this. There he is, my Darth Vader. And now you can do lightsaber battles. I think it would be cool if the Black Series had light-up savers. That'd been awesome, but they don't. Oh, oh, come on, He-Man, you can do it. Oh, 
Okay. Cool. Well, hey, you guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Let me go and show you the figure one last time so you get a, a good look at it. And then uh, I have almost 4,000 subscribers now, so thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys next video.